Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Arabic Khatawat and to the fourth video related to how to organize your notes in Arabic. And that would help you. This practice actually is aimed to um, direct students on how to keep their words uh, in longer sentences and activate words to be able to produce longer sentences. Uh, here we are going to review the family. Al-a'ila, al-a'ila, family. In al aila um, there are two categories. There is uh, there are family members related to the mom or the maternal side, and then there is uh, there are a set of uh, references to family members that are related to the father side as paternal uh, category. So jad for granddad, jad, jad, and jadda. In both are actually referred to as Jad and Jadda, granddad and grandmom. Jadda, right here with a Shadda, and Jad. The other interesting part when it comes to mom, I had students ask me, which one do I say? Um, it's the same way in English. The way you would say mo mother, mom, and mommy is the same way you would say mama, um, and walida. Walida is more formal. Um is average. You would also use it as my mom, ummi. It comes in between a uh, mama and walida, the informal one, which is mama, mama. So a lot of Arabic speakers, they would say mama. Uh, and at a younger age, this is just a cultural side note, Mama at a younger age and even older would some individuals would still call their mom's mama. I do still call my mom mama, uh, but if I'm referring to her in a formal setting, I would refer to her as walida and say walida ti my mother, and um also um. Uh, dad for baba. I'm sorry, daddy for baba, and then dad for ab, and then father. Walid, Walid. Another thing to remember in this, because I had students actually ask me how to place the, uh, the possession when you say my, you are only act flexible with the two words, ab and Walid, and same thing for um and Walida. You could say ummi, ummi, Walidati, abi, Walidi, but it would be hard to say mama. Mama yi. <laughs> so mama and baba uh, are not um, actually uh, applicable with with preposition. I'm sorry, not preposition with the possession. When you say my, here we have uncle and aunt. For the paternal, sorry, the maternal uh, aunt, we say right here aunt. Khalati, khalati. For aunt, we have the ta to refer to feminine. And here, khali, uncle. Khali, khali. The paternal uncle and aunt. For uncle is ammi, ammi. Ammati, ammati, ammati. Uh, there is another um, cultural side note here when it comes to saying khala. And khalati uh, or amma and ammati. Here I'm saying my in ammi and I'm saying ammati my and I'm saying khalati and then khali. If I'm going to only say an uncle or an aunt, I would take all the ya away and for the feminine ones, I would keep the ta'mar buta for my aunt, paternal aunt. Only ta'marbuta right here. And for my aunt, maternal aunt, I would keep ta'marbuta on the final form. But what I was going to say about the cultural side note is that not everybody that is related to our mom is uh, called khala. Also, friends, uh, parents are called khala. If, for example, my friend's mom, um, she's older than me, I would call her khala.
uh, out of respect, instead of calling her by her first name, it's in the Arab culture, it's quite rude to call someone uh, older than you by their first name. So a lady, you would refer to her as Khala, because um, given the gender fact, she's closer to your mom, so you would say Khala. And again, a male figure who is like your friend's father, you would call him Am or Ammi, my uncle, instead of Khali, because he's gender again, um, because he's closer to your father, you would call him Am, my uncle, as the paternal uncle. So again, this is just a side note on the cultural facts. When it comes to addressing people older than you, they don't have to necessarily be your uncle and your aunt, but you would call him auntie, uh, I mean, call her auntie as khala and ammi as am. Uh, cousin, only your cousins are called cousins, <laughs> but friends are friends and friends can be called actually brother and sister in a formal setting. If you don't know somebody's name, you would call him akhi, hey brother, or a female, you would call her ukhti, or sister. And that's also a nice way to um, break the ice when you interact with someone from another culture, but you don't know their names, you would call him brother and sister. Uh, Ibn Khali is the son of my maternal uncle, um, Bint Khalati, the daughter of my maternal aunt, and vice versa, you could say Bint Khali, and you could say Ibn Khalati, but Ibn is for son and Bint for daughter. Ibn Ammi, son of my uncle, and Bint Ammati, daughter of my aunt. And again, you could say Bint Ammi, daughter of my uncle, and then Ibn Ammati, son of my aunt. But all of these in English, all these uh, four, or even actually if you alternate Bint and Ibn, you'll end up with eight. All of these eight references are only used to say cousin in English, which is quite uh, nice in English. You only say cousin, but in Arabic, you have eight references, uh, depending on the gender, four for masculine and four for feminine. And again, you have two maternal, um, maternal aunt and uh, uncle, and then two paternal aunt and uncle quite handful to remember, but it's actually fun when you um, write it down and try to memorize it. The other set is Akh. This one I'm not applying in my, the possession, I'm just giving the single, uh, the, the isolated form of the word. We have Akh as brother and Ukht as sister. And if I want to say Akhi, I would add the Ya right here at the end and say Akhi. And again, as I said or mentioned earlier, if you don't know someone's name um, and you you would just address him as Akhi, hey brother, my brother, and Ukht. Then the plural form of brother is brothers, Ikhwa, Ikhwa. And then the plural form of sisters is Akhawat, Akhawat. In this following line, we have son, Ibn, similar to what we said here in Ibn Khali, my maternal uncle's son, and Bint is daughter. And if you're, you want to say my son, you say Ibni, and again here you're adding my at the end of son, Ibni, and Binti. And also the, these two words are used by people who are not necessarily your parents. Um, they would refer to you as their son and daughter uh, out of respect. The same respect you would show someone older than you uh, as uncle and auntie. You would also receive it when someone calls you son and daughter. And abna, abna sons and banat daughters. Let's look at this reading part. And I will try to read it um, at, like in one set without interruption. And then after that, I will um, try to translate it. 
Let's begin. قراءة قراءة عائلتي كبيرة والدتي ووالدي من أصل سوري أسكن مع أخي وأختي في مدينة قريبة من مدينة والداي أخي يعمل وأختي تدرس أنا أعمل وأدرس في نفس الوقت جدي وجدتي من أصل تركي خالي وخالتي يسكنان في تركيا أبناء وبنات خالي وخالتي يسكنون في أوروبا So let me translate it to you then I'm going to read it without uh, scrolling through the words So عائلتي كبيرة My family is big والدتي ووالدي من أصل سوري my, my, my والدتي my mom and والدي my dad are of Syrian origin أسكن مع أخي وأختي في مدينة قريبة من مدينة والدي I live with my brother and my sister in a city close to the city of my parents, the word Walidei, I'll bring the mouse here, the word, wa the word Walidei is my two parents, it's dual. أخي يعمل وأختي تدرس. My brother works and my sister studies. أنا أعمل وأدرس في نفس الوقت. I work and study at the same time. في نفس الوقت. It's one expression. جدي وجدتي my granddad and grandmom من أصل تركي are of Turkish origin خالي وخالتي يسكنان في تركيا my uncle and my aunt here we're using the maternal uncle and aunt both here the dual يسكنان both live and the dual is attached to the verb as an fi turkiya in turkey abna wa banat khali the sons and the daughters of my uncle wa khalati and my aunt yaskunun fi europa live in europe yaskunun is the plural form of they live yaskunun fi europa and right here you have sa kana the origin or the stem of the verb to live. And then here you add ya un for, for the plural. So this is um, just the translation part. And let me read it in one set in a faster pace. And you may pause between these three different readings. The first one I did was um, slow. The second one was with the translation and the third one now is a faster pace. Let's begin. عائلتي كبيرة ووالدتي ووالدي من أصل سوري أسكن مع أخي وأختي في مدينة قريبة من مدينة والداي أخي يعمل وأختي تدرس أنا أعمل وأدرس في نفس الوقت جدي وجدتي من أصل تركي خالي وخالتي يسكنان في تركيا أبناء وبنات خالي وخالتي يسكنون في أوروبا So you could actually read it in this pace a bit faster and some people if they're comfortable they can read it even faster than that. So if I go fast... um. I could I, I could actually go faster than that um, to just uh, accommodate to those who would like to 
compare between uh, different readings. So let me read the last part in a faster pace, faster than the third part. Um, so here. عائلتي كبيرة ووالدتي ووالدي من أصل سوري أسكن مع أخي وأختي في مدينة قريبة من مدينة والداي أخي يعمل وأختي تدرس أنا أعمل وأدرس في نفس الوقت جدي وجدتي من أصل تركي خالي وخالتي يسكنان في تركيا أبناء وبنات خالي وخالتي يسكنون في أوروبا so the reason why I'm reading in different paces is I would like you to be um, aware of the importance of reading really slow. Uh, as a, at the beginning level, it's very important to visually recognize the letters and then you have to accommodate uh, your, your skills as well. When it comes to reading, you have to respect your own learning style and you don't have to compare your pace to other people's paces because it will vary depending on your proficiency with the language and the more uh, exposure you have to the Arabic language, I believe that the faster you will become without even realizing that. So please take your time as you read. And again, you could pause this video and look at the script um, take a screenshot, read it over and over, and record yourself. And that way you would um, also train yourself to listen into your voice and listen to your own reading and compare it to previous readings that you have uh, exercised before. And then that way you could see your first reading or old the old way you used to read with the, the faster pace that you acquired through um, many uh, opportunities that allow you to be exposed to the Arabic language. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and hopefully the next video will be practicing more reading. Thank you.